Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. I'm Tom Betts, your host. This is Season 7, Episode 3, Number 124. Today we're going to talk about in our History of the Spaghetti Western segment, Two Sergeants of General Custer with Franco and Ciccio. Whatever became of will be Evelyn Stewart. Who are those guys will be Hugo Fangeregi. Uh, you probably don't know the name, but you'll sure recognize the face. Film of the week is Yellow Hair in the Fortress of Gold. Uh, I've got an autograph of the week. I found the one I dropped last week and couldn't find. Got it back. Got a new book that I just received this week, so we'll go over that. I don't have any posters from either one of these films, but I've got a couple of things to show you. And then we've got a CD of the week, which is the Two Sergeants of General Custer. And then we'll wrap things up with... Uh, News of the week, and there's been quite a few DVD Blu-rays been released from Spain and Germany this week that we'll cover. So let's get started in the history of the Spaghetti Western and Two Sergeants of General Custer. Okay, Two Sergeants of General Custer. This is an Italian-Spanish film co-production. came out in 64, which was we're still in that era. Uh, the Italian title is E. Dui, Sergente del Generale Custer. Spanish title is Dos Vivales en Fuerte Alamo. The alternate English title is Two Idiots at Fort Alamo, which is probably a better title than the Two Sergeants of General Custer. Anyway, the producer is Mario Mariani. The director is Giorgio Simonelli. Story is by Marcello Ciorciolini. Screenplay is also by Ciorciolini, Giorgio Simonelli, and Amadeo Salazzo. Uh, cinematography is by Isidori, Isidoro Goldberg. Berger, I'm sorry, let's go over that again. Isidoro Goldberger. It's in Kodakolor and Technoscope. Music is by Angelo Francesco Lavagnino. Runs 97 minutes, 97 too long minutes. Uh, the main cast is composed of Franco La Pera, or Franco Lang, played by Franco Frankie. Dicky or Ciccio La Pera, is played by Ciccio and Gracia. Beth, or Betty, the Lynx Smith, is played by Margaret Lee. Baby O'Connor, is played by Maura Orfe. Sergeant Fithouse, is played by Fernando Sancho. Uh, there's a main Indian in here, and he's played by Hugo Fangeregi, which we'll go over as who are, are those guys. Colonel Custer is played by Ernesto Calindri. A couple of other names that you might be familiar with that are in the cast is a, there's a northern adjutant played by Ignacio Spala. Of course, we know him as Pedro Sancho, Sancho Sanchez. I'm sorry. And then we have... Uh, a couple of the Akmar brothers. Uh, Franco Akmar plays a soldier, and his brother Giancarlo plays a saloon brawler. So the story goes, during the Civil War, two Union soldiers of Sicilian origin, Franco, played by Franco Franchi, and Ciccio, played by Ciccio and Gracia, are imprisoned on charges of desertion. Condemned to certain death, they are saved by their utter stupidity. The Yankee army is in need of two complete idiots to be used as an espionage operation as decoys for two intelligence officers which, uh, during the operation. A series of circumstances, however, lead Franco and Ciccio to be continuously interfering with their intelligence companions. Eventually, they fall prey to the Indians. Even in this circumstance, the two bring to light all their stupidity and they succeed, however, in spite of everything, to halt the advance of the Confederates, making themselves of great service to the Army. Rewarded in the field, they are promoted to sergeants, and during the process of being decorated with honors, Franco and Ciccio do not 
pass up the opportunity to make their last display of nonsense. Uh, the comedy team of Franco and Ciccio were put together in a string of series of films based on the duo, and this was their fifth film. They usually play themselves AKO Franco something and Ciccio something. They usually are not too bright and find themselves in predicaments or situations usually brought about by their own actions and then an unexpected happening allows them to become heroes or at least leave their problems behind while they escape to further misadventures. Their films usually contain at least two beautiful actresses, which is a plus, and a well-known actor who plays their foil or their guardian angel. The writing is 20% clever and ingenious and 80% slapstick. Chicho's straight man plays opposite the rubber-faced antics of Franco's clown. The closest American equivalent was the acting team of Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. If you've seen one of their films, you've basically seen them all. The only difference is the setting and the plot. Uh, in this film, since the film is not available in English, I had to watch it in Spanish. So I was not able to understand everything that was going on during the, uh, the, the film. Visual interpretations can only give you so much information. I've seen several synopsis of this film, which gives false information, or if correct, the screenwriters were way off the mark. One says our heroes were trying to stop the advances of the Confederate General Custer. Well, in reality, as we all know, Custer was not a Confederate. He was belonged to the Union Army. Another claims the Indians were Apaches. Custer never fought the Apaches. He fought the Sioux. Custer is also represented, represented by an older, balding general, while Custer was known for his golden, long locks of hair and was a young man. Uh, this is available only in Italian and Spanish that I know of, and there's plenty of dialogue, so if you don't speak or understand Italian or Spanish, it will be hard to follow. It's available in Italian and Spanish DVD. Check out the Spanish I'm sorry, the Spaghetti Western database for detailed information. It's also on YouTube in Italian and Spanish, and that's where I saw it. Uh, as far as actors' profiles go, uh, Sergeant Franco La Pera, or Lang, was played by Franco Frankie. He was born by, as Francesco Beninato in Palermo, Sicily, Italy, on September 18th, 1928. He formed a comedy duo with partner Chichu and Gracia in 1959, and they were tremendously successful during the 60s and 70s in Italy. Franco made 12 spaghetti westerns and another five which were either never made or completed. He died in Rome on December 9, 1992, at the age of 64 from a heart attack. I covered him in greater detail in episode number 33. Uh, his partner, Ciccio and Gracia, played Sergeant Dick or Ciccio La Pera. He was born Francesco and Gracia in Palermo, Sicily, Italy, on October 5, 1922. He and Franco were discovered by singer Domenico Madugno of Volari fame. Ciccio appeared in 10 spaghetti westerns, all with Frankie, and five that were not made. He died in Rome of a heart attack on April 8, 2003, at the age of 81. I covered him in greater detail also in episode number 33. Okay, moving along, Beth or Betty the Link Smith was played by Margaret Lee. Lee was born Margaret Gwendolyn Box on August 4th, 1943 in Wolverhampton, England. After training at the Italia Conti Theater School in London, she graduated in 1960. She then moved to Rome to pursue a career in films. Her film debut came in the sword and sandal adventure, Fire Monsters Against the Son of Hercules in 1962, where she played the female lead alongside Reg Lewis. With a blonde fluffy look modeled after Marilyn Monroe, Lee spent the first half of the 1960s appearing in numerous Italian comedies and parodies, several with Franco and Ciccio. Few of these films were received much, if any, distribution in English-speaking territories, but they were highly successful in Italy, making Lee a well-known film actress. She moved on to Eurospy films, where she dropped the blonde Marilyn Monroe 
inspired look and became a brunette instead. Lee's beauty and talent also caught the eye of international film producer Harry Allen Towers, who gave Lee wider international recognition. She retired from films in 1982 and moved to the United States. Lee was involved in one other spaghetti western to be entitled I Shot Johnny Ringo in 1964, but it was never made. Then we have Baby O'Connor, played by Moira Orfe. Miranda Moira Orfe was born on December 21, 1931, in Cadroipo, Udine, Italy, the daughter of circus owners. She became a film and TV actress. She's the cousin of actress Liana Morfe, who was born in 1937. Moira appeared in 42 films from 1960 to 2003, including one other spaghetti western, which we've already covered, Treasure of the Aztecs, in episode number 99. Moira inherited her family circus and ran it until her death on November 15, 2015, in Brescia, Lombardy, Italy, at the age of 83. She was married to circus performer Walter Nones, who was born in 34 and died in 2016. They were married from 61 until her death in 2015. She's the mother of circus performers Stefano Nones Orfe and circus performer Laura Orfe. Then we have Colonel Custer, played by Ernesto Calindri. Ernesto Calindri was born in Sertaldo, Tuscany, Italy, on February 5, 1909. He was a director, writer, theater, and TV actor. Ernesto came from a family of actors. His father was actor Manlio Calindri and his mother, actress Eplogli Valetti. His sister is actress Fedora Dora Calindri. She was born in 1910. She died in 2002. Calindri was married to actress Roberto Mari. Her real name is Ivy Miranda. She was born in 1918 and died in 1991. They were married from 1939. I'm sorry. She died in 1993. They were married from 1939 until her passing in 93. He's the father of actor Gabriel Calendry, who was born in 1960, and three other children. Then we have Sergeant Fithouse, who is played by Fernando Sancho, who we seem to go over every single episode. Fernando Sancho Les was born in Zaragoza, Spain on January 7, 1916 and died on July 31, 1990 at the age of 74. We covered him in his own special, number nine. Okay, that covers the uh, history of the Spaghetti Westerns and now we'll move on to whatever became of, and that's Evelyn Stewart. Okay, Evelyn Stewart is one of the first ladies of the Italian Western. She was born Ida Galli on March 9, 1939 in Sestola, Modena, Italy. After graduating from the Magistral Institute, she moved to Rome and had been living there for four or five years when she started making films. In Rome, by chance, a friend of her sister, who was an actor named Gerard Landry, a French actor who lived in Rome, took pictures of her at the beach and showed them to his agent, and so it all began. Ida said she had wanted to be a teacher. It happened that these photographs would end up in the hands of director Piero Tellini who had long been looking for a young girl with her characteristics. She was immediately hired. After a few small roles, she made her debut in 1959's Nel Blu de Pinto de Blu as Donata. The film was quite interesting with Domenico Modugno, who had just won the San Remo Festival with his song Volari. Volari and uh, Nel Blu de Pinto de Blu are the same song and Giovanna Rally. Tellini was a screenwriter and worked with Federico Fellini, and this was her first, his first time directing. They did not have much success, though. She was noticed, though, by a producer named Franco Sella Cancellari, who gave her a contract, and so she appeared in A Mistress for the Summer in 1961, directed by Eduard Molinaro in France. She was still fighting with herself as to whether to continue in the cinema or become a teacher as she wanted to be. This producer, however, insisted, but try, try, you'll see. Then Fellini called her and made her do his role in La Dolce Vita, 
as a debutante and an important role in the film. After that, she became a hot property in Italian films. She thought she would take acting lessons or attend an acting school, but Lucina Chino Visconti advised her to do all kinds of films that were offered to her. According to him, this was the only way you learned. Fellini, for his part, told her something, that there is no school that can teach you. She felt the reason she never achieved stardom, like Claudia Cardinale or Sofia Loren, was that she, after appearing in The Leopard, she married soccer player Mario Coco and had her first child, actor Alessandro Coco, who was born in 64. She would leave the industry periodically to raise her, her children. That's why she thought she never became a huge star. In 65, she appeared in another Western, Blood for a Silver Dollar, with Giuliano Gemma. It was in this film that Ida Gali became Evelyn Stewart. She said they made us change all our names. It was mandatory because they sold it to the Americans and they didn't want these foreign names. I do not know who came up with them. I remember that as Evelyn, the name to me was good enough. It turned out well and there were no special reasons behind the pseudonym. She's also been billed under the aliases Priscilla Steele, Ariana Gali, and Eastley Oberon as well as various spellings of these names. The film brought in a lot of money, and then right after that, she made Adios Gringo, and from there she made a whole series of Westerns in Italy and Spain. But these first two are the most interesting, both with Gemma, with whom she had met during The Leopard because Visconti cast her as the daughter of Burt Lancaster, and she spent more than a month taking piano lessons so that she could move her fingers in a coherent manner. Gemma was with her because while she played the piano, he was singing. She accepted the roles in various genres on purpose so she wasn't typecast, such as The Sweet Body of Deborah, that inaugurated her career in Italian giallo films from which she became a real star. In all, Evelyn Stewart has appeared in over 60 films and TV appearances. Today, she looks back and remembers that to stop working and at that time meant missing chances. On the other hand, she had a, she made a lifestyle choice. This job as an actress, I did not choose. So I did not take it very seriously from the beginning. Although this does not mean that I didn't work hard. I realized that the people I met, I liked very much. I had played wonderful characters. So I really have good memories of my years as an actress. After retiring from film, she worked for 25 years in the world of art. I'll post a, list of her filmography on YouTube and Facebook when we get done with this episode. Now let's move on to Who Are Those Guys and Yugo Fangiorgi. Uh. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name right, but who knows? It's Yugo, U-G-O. Fangiregi or Fangiregi, F-A-N-G-A-R-E-G-G-I. -G -G he was born in Genoa, Italy on January 30th, 1938. He was an Italian director, film and TV actor and voice actor. He made films using both his real name and the pseudonyms, Hugo Fangar Smith and Hugo Mudd, M-U-D-D. Fangiregi established himself as a character actor specializing in comedies. His distinctive, almost Caricature features made him unforgettable. He appeared in around 110 films and television appearances. He worked with such well-known directors as Lucio Fulci, Ettore Scola, Nanny Loy, Lena Wertmuller, Dino Risi, Dario Argento, Tonino Valeri, and Nando Cicero. In 2010, he appeared in the RAI TV miniseries Il Signori, Della Truffa alongside Gigi Proetti. He also had an amateur theater company based in Ornaro called The Independence of Yugo Fangiregi. Yugo married, was married to director, theater, film actress, costume designer Antoinetta Ermini. Fangiregi died in Rome on October 21, 2017 from Parkinson's disease at the age of 79. Hugo appeared in seven spaghetti westerns. Among the best known were The Last Gun in 64. He plays a character named Bowtie and is credited as Hugo Mudd. The Two Sergeants of General Custer, which we just discussed in 65, he plays an Indian. 
Bullet for a Stranger in 71, he plays Pedro Sancho. In Massacre at Fort Holman in 72, he plays Fred or Ed Wendell, and he's credited as William Spofford. In Seven Nuns in Kansas City in 73, he plays the character Dave. Okay, I'll post his filmography also when we finished with this episode. Now let's move on to the film of the week, and that's Yellow Hair and the Fortress of Gold. Okay, I thought I'd cover some of these later spaghetti westerns, as we'll probably never get to them in order. But today we'll talk about the Yellow Hair and the Fortress of Gold. It's a 1984 USA Spanish film co-production. Uh, the USA title, as I said, is Yellow Hair and the Pecos Kid, or Yellow Hair and the Fortress of Gold. The Spanish title is Pelo Amarillo y Pecos Kid, and Yellow Hair y Pecos Kid. Also, La Leyenda de la Fortaleza de Oro. And it was uh, directed, and the story was written by Matt Simber. His real name was Tomas Ottaviano. He also wrote the screenplay along with John Kershaw. Cinematography is by John Cabrera, whose real name is John Puig. It's in Metro Color. Music is by Franco Piersanti, and it runs 102 minutes. The main cast is played by Yellowhair, Laureen Landon. The freckled or Pecos Kid is played by Ken Roberson. Sheo Tiwa is played by John Gaffari. Uh, Colonel Torres is played by Luis Lorenzo. Gray Cloud is played by Claudia Gravy. Flores is played by Aldo Sambrell. And The Man Who Knows is played by Eduardo Fajardo. A couple of other People that you'll know and recognize are one of the Comanches, played by Daniel Martin. Uh, Machine Gunner is played by Roman Arisna Verretta. And Antonio Ruiz, who plays the little kid and for a few dollars more, he shows up as a cowboy, so you have to look to see him. Uh, story goes, Yellow Hair, played by Lorreen Landon, and her sympathetic, courageous sidekick, the Pecos Kid, played by Ken Roberson, are after a treasure of gold in an Aztec temple. Told in a 1940 serial style, Yellowhair, a valiant warrior whose origins are unknown, was adopted into a tribe of fierce Comanches. Along with her faithful sidekick, the Pecos Kid, they have run-ins with an army of Mexican soldiers commanded by an effeminate colonel, played by Luis Lorenzo, a gang of dis dastardly outlaws led by Flores, Aldo Sambrell, and a mean saloon owner named Tortuga, played by Ramiro Oliveros, and a deadly tribe of Aztec warriors led by a fearsome Aztec chieftain named Sheowitiwa, played John Gafari, who is also producer of the film. While searching the countryside for the golden treasure, uh, the thrilling and stirring movie is full of imagination and, and, and fantasy introduces us to a brave heroine female counterpart to Geronimo. Yellow hair is superior to any male and is a woman of beauty, a warrior of strength, a hunter of men. Along the way, yellow hair finds her mother um, slain and takes a vow of vendetta until one day she meets her match. In the end, yellow hair learns a long hidden truth. Gray Cloud really isn't her mother. She's the daughter of a Tulipan Indian priestess and her white lover from Texas, a man the Indians consider a god because of his yellow hair. Okay, I gotta give credit to the producers and the director for taking a different visual concept, uh, which was tried and succeeds in some ways, but overall the film is just another adventure film which were popular during that period, such as Tony Anthony's Treasure of the Four Crowns in 83, Michael Douglas in Romancing the Stone and Richard Chamberlain's King Solomon's Mines in 85, and Alan Quaterman and the Lost City of Gold in 86. Uh, Yellow Hair actually includes the audience and their reactions to what they are witnessing on the screen, cheering the heroes and booing the hissing the villains. Although the audience shown here are mainly young kids attending a Saturday matinee, this is by far not a kid's adventure or B-Western, and it's 
as it's surprisingly violent given the tulipon's habit of beheading, torturing, and cutting the hearts out of their enemies. This was one of the last hurrahs of the genre, and all the Spanish actors involved are showing their age, but still are competent in their roles and give us a nostalgic look at what was. Okay, as far as actor profiles, we have Yellow Hair, played by Laureen Landon. Laureen Landon Coughlin was born in Toronto, Canada, Can Ontario, Canada, on March 17, 1957. She's a writer, songwriter, film, and TV actress. Landon's family moved to the United States when she was four. Landon starred as Molly, one of the two female wrestlers who are managed by Peter Falk in Robert Aldrich's All the Marbles in 1981. The athletic and aggressive Landon also performed a lion's share of her own stunts in the film. Landon was very funny as a Daffy stewardess in Airplane 2, the sequel, in 1982, and was an excellent as Mike Hammer's loyal secretary, Velda, in I, the Jury, in 82. Her character, Teresa, in the Maniac Cop films was named after her mother. She's still active today. She appeared as Mother Stan in 2023's the Left Hand of Satan. Uh, the Freckled or Pecos Kid was played by Ken Roberson. Ken Roberson is a producer, cinematographer, and actor. He's president of Spectrum Films in Mexico City. I've never been able to find any substantial information on him, birth date, uh, any other activities. He's just an enigma. Shea Wote is played by John Gahari. C. Hanger Gafari was born in Azbajani, USSR on September 10, 1940. He appeared mainly in Turkish and Iranian films in the 70s. Kafari also served as a producer on titles, not only on Yellow Hair, but Hundra in 83 and La Cruz de Iberia in 1990. In 1975, he had a small appearance on the American television series, Medical Center. In the early 1990s, Kafari retired from the film scene. And then we have uh, Colonel Torres was played by Luis Lorenzo. He was born in Madrid, Spain on July 23rd, 1943. He's appeared in over 70 films and TV appearances since 76, including four Euro Westerns, including the two Black Wolf films in 81, and the TV series Zorro with Duncan Rieger, and One Man's Hero with Tom Berenger in 1999. He's married to actress Luisa Armenteros. She was born in 1951. And then we have Grape Cloud, played by Claudia Gravy or Gravy. She was born Marcia Claude Perenwas, born on May 12, 1945, in Boma, Belgian Congo. She's lived in Madrid since 1965, where she made her film debut. During the following decade, she became a familiar face in Spanish cinema with roles in dozens of films, including both strictly Spanish films and international co-productions. She's appeared in nine Euro Westerns, including The Dreadful Modelo, Bad Man's River, and John the Bastard. In more recent years, she has, been, has supplemented her appearances on the big screen with recurring television roles and performances in the theater. And then we have our Almost regulars, Flores, played by Aldo Sambrell. Alfredo Sanchez Brell was born in Madrid on February 23, 1931. He died from a stroke on July 10, 2010, in Alicante, Spain, at the age of 79. Sambrell appeared in 57 Spaghetti Westerns. We covered him in his own special episode, number 60. And then we have Man Who Knows, played by Eduardo Fajardo. Eduardo Martinez Fajardo was born on August 14, 1924, in Mace, Pontevedra, Galicia, Spain. And he died in Mexico City on July 4, 2019, at the age of 94. He appeared in 35 Spaghetti Westerns, and we covered him more extensively in episode number 33. Okay, now let's move on to CD of the Week. Okay, Yellow Hair in the Fortress 
of gold had no audio release, no LP, no CD. So we'll cover the one that was released, which is the Two Sergeants of General Custer by composer Angelo Francesco Lavagnino. It was released in 2010 in Italy on Digit Movies. It's a Mercedes DM 156. It has 22 tracks of music with a listing time of 49 minutes and 31 seconds. It's a value of $22. As you can see, it's paired up with two mafia men in the uh, far west, so that's why there's so many tracks of music. As far as the composer is concerned, that's Francesco Lavagnino. He was born in Genoa, Liguria, Italy, on February 22, 1909, and died in Gavi, Piedmont, Italy, on August 21, 1987. He composed the scores for 24 spaghetti westerns. We covered him in greater detail in episode number 119. Okay, let's move on to, this is uh, again the copy of CD of two uh, sergeants for General Custer. Uh, the nice thing about these CDs, is they come with a little booklet inside, which is usually in Spanish or Italian, but it sometimes has Italian, uh, I mean American or English translations, so they're nice to get information from them. Okay, let's move on to Autograph of the Week. Okay, this is one I dropped on the floor last week and could, couldn't find, but I'll show it to you this week. I've got one of our buddy Leonard Mann, who we covered in his own episode. And this is from The Forgotten Pistolero, my favorite Leonard Mann movie. Uh, and again, that's, uh, if you want to find more about Leonard Mann, go to YouTube and look up Spaghetti Westerns Podcast and put in Leonard Mann, and it'll take you right there. It's our, I think it's our most watched uh, podcast. Okay, let's move on to Book of the Week. Okay, Book of the Week. And Tony might be interested in this. It's French Westerns. It goes all the way from silence up to the current day. It's called French Westerns on the Frontier of Film Genre and French Cinema. It's by Timothy Shi. S-H-E-I-E, -E. it was made this year, 2024, or released this year, probably published or made last year. It's from Edinburgh University Press. It's in English, has 242 pages. Um, I'm not thrilled about it. I haven't had a chance to go through it. It does have pictures, but it's all written. There's a filmography in the back which lists the name of the film in English. Or if it's only in French, it's in French, the year of release, and who the production company was. But that's it. doesn't give any more information. So hopefully that's covered in the body, but there's nothing in the back that gives a list of uh, who wrote each individual film and who starred in them, which was I was concerned about. I wanted to find information on. So that's the book of the week. I don't have any posters of either one of these two films we covered, but I do have a couple of things to show you. Uh, these are whiskey bottles from Germany. You can get them from the uh, Terrence Hill store, but they will not ship to the United States. So you got to find a bottler that or distributor that will send them to the States or somebody in the States that hands, handles them, and they're very difficult. That's the uh, Bud Spencer, which I got last year, and this year they released Terrence Hill which I could care less about the whiskey. I'm not a whiskey drinker, but my son is, so I give him the whiskey and I keep the bottles. So that's what we've got this week. Now let's move on to the news of the week. Okay, news of the week. <clears throat> Bunch of uh, DVD and Blu-ray releases. There's been a new Spanish Blu-ray special edition of 800 Balas, 800 Bullets, which came out in 2004, directed by Alex de Iglesia, and starring Sancho Gracia, Angel de Andres Lopez, Carmen Mora, and Luis Castro. It was released by Divisa slash Mercury Films 
on January 25th. It's region zero. It's in Spanish with Spanish and English subtitles and runs 125 minutes. Extras include the making of, interviews, deleted scene, and an alternate ending, Museum of the West. Now, the Museum of the West is actually shown in the film. And that's one of the great things about the movie when they go into the museum. It shows all these cutouts and posters from the uh, Italian Westerns that were made at uh, uh, Fort Bravo, they call it today. They call it Hollywood uh, something else back in those days. Anyways, that's one. Of the, I'd love to see that portion of the uh, video. It's also got a storyboard, galleries, trailers, and a 32-page booklet with text by Zavi Sanchez Pons. It was called Texas Hollywood. When I went there in 2003, the billboard said Texas Holly, Hollywood, two O's in Holly. Then we have another Spanish DVD released on January 12th. It's Gran Silencio, which is the Great Silence. She came out in 68, directed by Sergio Carbucci and starring Jean-Louis Stringent, Klaus Kinski, Frank Wolf, Vanetta McGee, and Luigi Pastilli. It's Region B. It's on the Divisa label. It's in Spanish and Italian mono with Spanish subtitles, and it runs 105 minutes. Then we have a German Blu-ray DVD combo released on the 25th. It's In Minor Wut Wieg Ich Ver Zentner, The Stranger and a Gunfighter, which came out in 74. It was directed by Antonio Marcariti and stars Lee Van Cleef and Lo Lee. It's on the Explosive Media label. It's in uh, Italian, German, and English mono with German and English subtitles. It runs 100 minutes, and extras include a trailer and photo galleries. Then we have a new Italian 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray and separate Blu-ray uh, release of Bote di Natale, which are troublemakers. That came out in 94. It was directed by Terrence Hill, Stars Hill, and Bud Spencer. It was released on January 26th on the Quadrifoglia Serendipity label. It's region two in PAL and contains two discs. Languages include 2.0 HD, uh, Spanish, French, Russian, Portuguese, Portuguese DD 5.1, Italian, English, and with Italian, English, French, German, Portuguese, Spanish subtitles. It runs 107 minutes. Extras include an Italian, English trailer, a special or two specials actually with Bud Spencer, La Musica, and Il Successo e Lavaro di Squadra documentaries. Then we have another Spanish Blu ray release of. Hurricane Sobre Mexico, which is Killer Kid. That came out in 67, directed by Leopoldo Savannah, and stars Anthony Steffen, Liz Barrett, and Fernando Sancho and Ken Wood. This was released on January 26th on the Mon Inter label. It's in widescreen in English and Spanish with a running time of 102 minutes. And last but not least, we have another Spanish Blu-ray release of Yo Soy Vuestro Verugo which is Sartana the Gravedigger, came out in 69, directed by Juliana Carmineo, and starred Johnny Garco, Frank Wolf, and Klaus Kinski. It was released on January 26th on the Mon Inter label. It's in widescreen in Spanish and English languages and runs 102 minutes. And we have one passing this week. Oscar-nominated film director and producer Norman Jewison, who steered the 1967 racial drama in the Heat of the Night to a Best Picture Oscar and also directed such popular films as Moonstruck, The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming, and The Thomas Crown Affair, as well as film musicals Fiddler on the Roof and Jesus Christ Superstar. Died January 20th at his Los Angeles home. He was 97. He was born Norman Frederick Jewison on July 21st, 1926 in Toronto, Canada. He was a producer on 1974's Billy Two Hats with Gregory Peck and Desi Arnaz. Okay, that wraps it up for this week. So until we meet again, adios amigos.